Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today is Christmas in July, day 19. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. This Christmas in July season, I am sharing stories from my early days as a medical coder and some personal stories that I have about myself. So I hope you all enjoy the series and let us begin. Today's episode is titled Bear Trap Hijinks. So let us begin. Let me first explain <laughs> what a bear trap is. So a bear trap in blue terms <laughs> is this. I have a basket full of candy that I leave out in my office. And I do this as a way to have an open door with my providers. You know, providers are so busy taking care of their patients. They're busy uh, doing lots of things that they sometimes forget to eat and they sometimes don't take care of themselves. So I keep candy and I keep water in my office so that way there's always some sort of refreshment if they need it. And I have been this way for the longest time. My partner, when I had a partner at the time uh, in the clinic, Tina, who I mentioned yesterday, <laughs> um, she never understood the concept of it in the beginning, right? Why this was so important. And I always stalked the bear trap and I call it the bear trap and it got its name because um, my providers were out of town at a symposium, right? And it got back to me that providers from another facility that is in our group of facilities um, heard, heard about this bear trap and they were asking about it. They said, you have a coder in your area that has a candy basket? Is that true? And they go, we heard about that. And um, they, they're like, yeah, you know, she does that. She makes sure that, you know, we have candy and water and things like that. They go, well, how come our coders don't do that? And <laughs> so they were saying that it's just specific to whoever wants to do it. And they said for her that she does it. And they said, well, why does she do it? And so one of the administrators who was hearing this said, well, you know, how, what do you do to attract alpha animals? And, and what is an example of an alpha animal? And they were like, I don't know, lion, tiger, bear. Right, exactly. What do you do when you're trying to attract bears? Well, you leave food out, right? <laughs> and they go, well, yeah. So that's exactly what she does. And it's very brilliant because, you know, they, they see a candy and they're like, oh, okay, well, while they're there, hey, I have a question. While it's just us, and so that is why it's so successful because it opens that door and it makes them more comfortable because they're just there and they can have this candy and relax and ask a question or not even ask a question at all. They can just sit there and just chill out for a couple of minutes before they have to go back to the chaos of the clinic. So they were like, well, how can we get our coders to do that? <laughs> they go, you have to start communicating with your coder and the coder has to, it is on them. I mean, it's individual to everybody. And so they were like, wow, they go, y'all are really lucky up there. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> so anyway, um, I always stock this basket. Uh, you know, I, I go to the store, I get the coupons, I get the candy, I stock it up. And I get a variety of candies. So I get like Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, which I cannot keep in the basket. They go very quickly every single time. <laughs> and I had gotten 100 grand, the little 100 grand bars which I like, those are really good. <laughs> and I get like peanut M&Ms and just like Jolly Ranchers and things, like, just a variety of things. And sometimes occasionally I will put like little small bags of chips in there as well too. So it really all depends on what I get on sale, uh, what I can get the best deal on is what I put in there. So uh, Tina would occasionally give me money when she was eating out of the basket and she would say, well, you know, um, can you buy more of this candy or that candy? And I said, sure, and I'll go buy it and, and stock it up. And so <laughs> she noticed that one of the providers, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about two providers. One is Dr. George and one is Dr. Henry. These are not their real names, but you know. <laughs> so anyway, so Dr. George is very tall. He's a very tall doctor and he's very shy. Like if you talk to him, he just he just immediately gets very shy and very quiet. But um, one of the other um, the other ancillary staff was like, hey, hey, Dr. George, um, don't you want a snack or something like that? He's like, well, you know, I, I could really use something. And she's like, come on, come on. 
And so she brought him in there, right, into into the office. And um, he's like, hey, how's it going? And I'm like, hey, all right, you know. He's like, is it okay? I was like, oh, yeah, help yourself, you know. And so he's going through there, and they happen to spot the last hundred grand that was in the basket. And so he's like, oh, he goes, this is my favorite candy. I love this one. And so I was like, well, good. <laughs> well, Tina had noticed that he had got the last hundred grand. And so she's like, you know, Blue, you're going to have to restock that hundred grand. And I was like, yeah, you know, I will, you know. And so uh, a couple of weeks went by and Dr. George came back in. And so he was looking for hundred grand. Well, I hadn't found hundred grand because for some reason there, it just wasn't anywhere. I went to the grocery store. I had gone to the, um, the corner store. I had gone everywhere looking for hundred grand and I couldn't find any. And so I was like, well, I'll just wait. You know, nobody said anything. It's, it's fine. <laughs> so, um, so Dr. George and Dr. Henry share an office. I just want to put that out there too. Okay. So Dr. George was like, um, he's like, oh, you don't have any hundred grand. And I said, yeah, I, I've got to go um, to the store. I said, I've been looking for it. I said, ever since it ran out, <laughs> I said, it was like a run on it everywhere. <laughs> and he's like, oh, it's fine. He goes, I, I like the peanut M&Ms anyway. You got plenty of these. So I said, okay, well, that's good. I'm glad. And um, so he takes his candy and he takes off, right? So um, that weekend, I was able to find hundred grand and I was like, okay, I'm stocking up on this because clearly it is a very popular candy. So <laughs> I, I, I bring all the new candy in and Tina says, wow, that's a lot of candy you got. Uh, and I said, well, there was a sale first of all. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that I stocked up. And then, so I was, as I was stocking the basket, I said, well, let me go leave this for Dr. George because I know he was looking for it before. Well, he happened to be up in the operating room that day, right? So again, Dr. George and Dr. Henry share an office. Dr. Henry has no problem stopping in every morning, every afternoon to get candy. He'll grab candy, he'll grab some water. He has no problem stopping in. It's Dr. George that it's, it's a rarity that he'll come in there. Um, but Dr. Henry, again, in and out all day long. It's fine, whatever, <laughs> you know? So I, um, I don't see Dr. Henry in his in sitting in his desk because again they share an office and um but since i knew dr george was up in the operating room i was like okay this is the perfect time let me go leave it on his desk so i went and i left it on his desk well he had a really long surgery that day and i didn't see him because i left um i left at my designated time well tina my office mate uh she leaves an hour later than i do so she happened to see him in the hallway when he came back and so um, so she, I guess she had caught him after he had gone to his office and he was back out in the hallway walking with Dr. Henry. So she's like, Oh, Dr. George, Dr. George. I'm trying to remember who I'm talking about. That's why I'm going kind of slow. So she's like, Dr. George, Dr. George. And he's like, yeah. And then, um, she's like, did you get the hundred grand on your desk? And he's like, Oh, that was you that left out. He goes, Oh, he goes, I'm so thankful. He goes, I, I was in the OR so late, he goes, and then I saw that candy, he goes, I was like, that is so perfect because I'm so hungry. And then she's like, no, 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 She goes, I, I didn't leave it, Blue left it. And then I, she goes, I just wanted to make sure that you got it. And he said, oh, tell her I said thank you. That was so awesome of her. He goes, I, it really hit the spot. Well, she said that uh, Dr. Henry was like, I didn't get a candy on my desk. And then she's like, oh, but you're always in and out. And so uh, she goes, you stop that. You quit being greedy. And so <laughs> so she she left for the end of the day, right? So the next morning, uh, she's talking to me, right? And she's like, you know, Blue, uh, I ran into uh, Dr. George in the hallway yesterday, and he was walking with Dr. Henry. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, really? And she's like, yeah. She goes, I asked him, um, did you get the candy that Blue, that she was, did you get the candy that was left on your desk? And he's like, oh, that was you? And he was telling she was telling me what he had said and she's like, no, 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 no. It was blue who left the candy because, you know, she wanted to make sure that you got a piece because she knows that you like that. She finally found it. And, um, so, so then, uh, I was like, oh, and then she was telling me what Dr. Henry said. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> He's in here all the time. I, I didn't need to leave him anything on his desk. And she's like, that's what I told him. She said, I told him to stop being greedy. And so, um, I was like, okay, you know, whatever. So then, lo and behold, uh, Dr. Henry shows up at the door. And he, and, and Dr. Henry's real name, if you, 
um, rearrange the letters in Snickers spells spells his name and it spells his initials, right? Well, part of them, you have to kind of, uh, <laughs> you have to, with the letters, you have to kind of um, edit a couple of the letters just to, just to make the last letter, right? But anyway, so you can get his initials and you can, you can write out his name, right? So, uh, so anyway, <laughs> so Dr. Henry, he's going through uh, the candy basket and I'm sitting there and I'm doing, doing my thing at my desk and, and Tina's doing her thing at her desk. And he says, oh, look, he's like, it's my initials. He goes, um, he, cause he's picking up the Snickers, the little Snickers bites. And he goes, look, it's my initials. He goes, you can leave this on my desk anytime. And I happen to be looking at my thing and I stop and I look over at him and he looks over at me and he's smiling, right? And so he takes off and he's running out the door with his candy. And I turn around in my chair and I said, Tina, did you hear that? She goes, he got jealous. And I said, I think he did. So I was like, oh, okay. I was like, well, I said, boys, really? <laughs> Knowing that Dr. George never goes in there and Dr. Henry is always in there. It didn't make sense to me to leave anything for Dr. Henry. But as you will notice in, in your clinic life, that how you treat people, people are going to notice, right? And I guess because maybe uh, Dr. Henry felt that I was giving special treatment to Dr. George, <laughs> that that was, you know, like, why wasn't he getting special attention too? Why wasn't he getting anything on his desk? But again, you know, Dr. George is very quiet and, you know, you have to, to include people, sometimes you have to be there for them, right? And so in that instance, that's what I did. So uh, I just start laughing. I shake my head. I go back to work. Well, then Tina goes, hmm. And I hear her get up, right? I hear Tina get up. And then I, we both hear Dr. Henry leaving to go to the OR. And so Tina gets up and she starts looking through the candy basket. And sure enough, she goes, hey, Blue. She goes, you want to do something? And that's like, what do you have up your sleeve? And then she goes, no, I, I think this would be really funny. So she rearranged the letters in Snickers and then she, she got a marker and edited one of the letters and she's like, and it spells out his name. And so she's like, she goes, go leave it on his desk. And I go, no, I don't, I don't want to go in his office. She goes, I'll be on the lookout. She goes, and I'll make sure that nobody comes back here because the way the offices were set up is our office was on the corner. There's a middle office and then George and Henry, or are in the end office, right? And they have the window and everything like that, which is fine, you know, whatever. And so she said, I'll go, I'll go watch out. And she goes, you go leave it on his desk. And I said, okay, you know, and so she goes out in the hallway and nobody else is in their office. Everybody's either in clinic or up in the OR. So we knew that Dr. Henry, Henry was going to be up in the OR. So I ran into his office, spelled out his name with the Snickers, ran back right? And I sat at my desk and she's like, did you do it? And I said, I did, I did. <laughs> so she goes back to her desk and we're just sitting there. Well, about an hour later, Dr. Henry comes back down from the OR, right? And he's stomping. He's, he's irritated. He's pissed. He's mad about something. He's like, Rrr! and all you hear is him grumbling down the hallway. He's stomping down the hallway. And all of a sudden you hear him stop. <laughs> he goes, oh, <laughs> because he found his, his name written out in the Snickers. He goes, you guys, he goes, thank you. But that completely changed his mood, like, just like that, because he was, he was irritated. Something happened in the OR. I don't even remember anymore. And he was mad because like all you heard was him stomping back to his office and he's not very tall to begin with. So the fact that he was stomping, <laughs> you know, he was pissed, you know? So he, <laughs> He goes, oh, you guys. So we were both laughing. And then, um, so we were just going back to work and, you know, doing whatever, right? So then he took a picture of it with his cell phone. So then he's walking back down the hallway because everybody had come back into the clinic and everybody was going to go do their own thing or whatever. So a group of them were walking down the hallway together. He literally stops in front of our office and says, look, look what's on my desk when I came back from the OR. And he showed them his phone and they go, oh, <laughs> So, no, I did not do that for everybody else. That was just a little hijinks thing that Tina and I did. 
um, just just for him, just for that one time, you know. <laughs> but it was funny. And again, you're gonna find that in in your clinic life that um, sometimes, like what you do is is so it can be so impactful depending on the situation. And in this situation, because he was already upset and he didn't expect this. And it was just something that was very spur of the moment, but that the fact that he was thought of at that moment, you know, it just kind of turned his whole morning around and he didn't stomp around after that. He was in a better mood. So it wasn't all so bad, right? <laughs> so anyway, that's my story for today. Yes, just a little hijinks with the, uh, the snack basket, but you know, I love that thing. It is awesome. And it, like I said, it brings so many people together and it's just something so little and it can do so much. It's all about the details, folks. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Please hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, please like this. Please share this if you found it entertaining and I will see y'all on the next episode. Bye.